Welcome to the Inspirational Living Podcast, brought to you today by Carbona, the company whose cleaning products have pretty much eliminated any concerns that I have with stained clothes or carpet stains. What makes Carbona's products so effective is that they aren't all-in-one cleaning solutions. This isn't something I really thought about before using them, but I've come to realize that you really do need a cleaning solution that is scientifically created to attack the exact stain you want to get rid of, be it a chocolate or blood stain on your clothes, or a pet who has soiled the carpet. There are actually nine different cleaning products within their Stain Devil line, which will go after the exact chemical makeup of the stain to remove it permanently. There are lots of little problems in life, but stains don't have to be one of them. Start living a life unstained today. Shop Carbona.com with the coupon code LIVING for 20% off. That's Carbona.com with the coupon code LIVING. Today's reading was edited and adapted from The Secret of the Ages by Robert Collier, published in 1926. In Proverbs it says that without vision the people perish. This bit of ancient wisdom does not refer to good eyesight. It was the eyes of the mind that counted in the days of old, just as they do today. Without them we have just so much power as a driven ox. We are worth only a little more than they. But given vision, imagination, the ability to visualize conditions and things a month or a year ahead, and there is no limit to our value or capabilities. The locomotive, the steamboat, the automobile, the airplane, all existed complete in the imagination of some person before they became facts. The wealthy individual, the powerful individual, the successful individual, Envision their successes in their mind's eye before ever they won them from the world. From the beginning of time, nothing has ever taken on material shape without first being visualized in the mind. The only difference between the sculptor and the mason is in the mental image behind their work. Rodin employed masons to hew his blocks of marble into the general shape of the figure he was about to form. That was mere mechanical labor. Then Rodin took it in hand, and from that rough-hewn piece of stone there sprang the wondrous figure of the thinker. The difference was all in the imagination behind the hands that wielded the mallet and chisel. After Rodin had formed his masterpiece, ordinary artisans copied it by the thousands. Rodin's work brought fabulous sums. The copies brought day wages. Conceiving ideas, creating something, is what pays, in sculpture as in all else. Mere handwork is worth only hand wages. The imagination, says Glenn Clark, is of all human qualities the most godlike, that which associates us most closely with God. The first mention we read of human beings in the Bible is where we are spoken of as an image. God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. The only place where an image can be conceived is in the imagination. Thus humanity, the highest creation of God, was a creation of God's imagination. The source and center of all our creative power, a power that above all others lifts us above the level of brute creation, is our power of making images, or the power of the imagination. 
There are some people who have always thought that the imagination is something which makes believe that which is not. This, however, is fancy, not imagination. Fancy converts that which is real into pretense and sham. Imagination enables one to see through the appearance of a thing to what it really is. There is a very real law of cause and effect which makes the dream of the dreamer come true. It is the law of visualization, the law that calls into being in this outer material world, everything that is real in the inner world. Imagination pictures the thing you desire, vision idealizes it, it reaches beyond the thing that is into the conception of what can be. Imagination gives you the picture. Vision gives you the impulse to make the picture your own. Make your mental image clear enough. Picture it vividly in every detail, and the genie of your mind will speedily bring it into being as an everyday reality. This law holds true of everything in life. There is nothing you can rightfully desire that cannot be brought into being through visualization. Suppose there is a position you want, a managerial position at your company. See yourself, just as you are now, sitting in the manager's chair. See your name on the door. See yourself handling the affairs as you would handle them. Get that picture impressed upon your subconscious mind. See it. Believe it. The genie of your mind will find the way to make it come true. The keynote of successful visualization is this. See things as you would have them be, instead of as they are. Close your eyes and make clear mental pictures. Make them look and act just as they would in real life. In short, daydream, but daydream with a purpose. Concentrate on the one idea to the exclusion of all others, and continue to concentrate on that one idea until it has been accomplished. Do you want a new car, a home, a business? They can all be one in the same way. They are in their essence ideas of mind, and if you will but build them up in your own mind first, stone by stone, complete in every detail, you will find that the genie of your mind can build them up similarly in the material world. C.W. Chamberlain said that the building up of a transcontinental railroad from a mental picture gives the average individual an idea that it is a big job, but the fact of the matter is, the final achievement, as well as the perfect mental picture, is made up of millions of little jobs, each fitting in its proper place and helping to make up the whole. It is the same with any work, any study. To quote William James, As we become permanent drunkards by so many separate drinks, so we become saints in the moral, and authorities and experts in the practical and scientific spheres, by so many separate acts and hours of working. Let no person have any anxiety about the upshot of their education, whatever the line of it may be. If you keep faithfully busy each hour of the working day, you may safely leave the final result to itself. You can with perfect certainty count on waking up some fine morning to find yourself one of the successful ones of your generation in whatever pursuit you may have singled out. Young people should know this truth in advance. The ignorance of it has probably caused more discouragement and faint-heartedness in those embarking on arduous careers than all other causes taken together. 
Remember that the only limit to your capabilities is the one you place upon them. There is no law of limitation. The only law is of supply. Through your subconscious mind, you can draw upon the universal supply for anything you wish. The ideas of universal mind are as countless as the sands on the seashore. Use them and use them lavishly, just as they are given. There is a little poem by Jesse B. Rittenhouse that so well describes the limitations that most of us put upon ourselves. It goes like this. I bargain with life for a penny, and life would pay no more, no matter how I begged at evening when I counted my scanty store. For life is a just employer. It gives you what you ask. But once you have set the wages, why then you must bear the task. I work for a menial's hire, only to learn dismayed that any wage I had asked of life, life would have surely paid. Aim high. If you miss the moon, you may hit a star. You are an intelligent, reasoning creature. Your mind is part of the universal mind, and you have the power to say what you require for perfect growth. Don't be miserly with yourself. Don't sell yourself for a penny. Whatever price you set upon yourself, life will give. So aim high. Demand much. Make a clear, distinct mental image of what it is you want. Hold it in your thought. Visualize it. See it. Believe it. The ways and means of satisfying that desire will follow. For supply always comes on the heels of demand. By doing this, you take your fate out of the hands of chance. You begin to control the experiences you are to have in life. But be sure to visualize only what you want, for the law works both ways. If you visualize your worries and your fears, you will make them real. Control your thought, and you control circumstances. Conditions will be what you make them. Most of us are like factories where two-thirds of the machines are idle, where the workers move around in a listless, dispirited sort of way, doing only a tenth of what they could do if the owner of the plant were watching and directing them. However, instead of that, the owner is off idly dreaming or waiting for something to turn up. What's needed is someone to point out to the owner the listless workers and idle machines and show how to put each one into working full time and over time. And that is what you need too. You are working only a tenth of your capacity. You are doing only a tenth of what you are capable of. The time you spend idly wishing or worrying can be used in so directing your subconscious mind that it will bring you anything of good you may desire. Alexander the Great perfected the phalanx, a triangular formation which enabled him to center the whole weight of his attack on one point in the opposing line. It drove through everything opposed to it. In that day and age it was invincible and the idea is just as invincible today. Keep one great thought in mind. See it being carried out step by step, and you can knit any group of workers into one homogeneous whole, all centered on that one idea. You can accomplish any one thing. You can put across any definite idea. Keep that mental picture ever in mind, and you will make it as invincible as was Alexander's phalanx of old. Know ye not, said St. Paul, that ye are the temples of the living God. 
No, most of us do not know. For even if we do, we never take advantage of it, so as to dwell in that temple, to proclaim our dominion over things and conditions. We never avail ourselves of the power that is ours, but we can if we choose to. The Inspirational Living Podcast is a production of The Living Hour. Get your own private feed to our podcast with full transcripts delivered right to your smartphone by becoming our patron today. It costs less than a cup of coffee a month and will ensure the production of our podcast for years to come. Visit livinghour.org slash patron. Thanks for listening. I look forward to talking with you next time.